And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Wednesday, September 12th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain, and many of the stories we read here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. And here are some of those news stories from the day from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. In a move that has drawn criticism from linguists and the University of Utah is restructuring a center devoted to documenting and preserving Native languages across North, Central, and South America. The action will allow the Center for American Indian Languages to focus on Utah's tribal languages, a shift from its current work on language across the New World, particularly in South and Central America, according to university officials. Former center leader Chris Rogers told the Salt Lake Tribune there isn't another facility doing research with such a broad focus, and the change is a blow to efforts to document native languages across the Americas before they fall silent. The eight-year-old center under the leadership of founder Lyle Campbell gave the university national stature in the language preservation movement. The Canadian mining company Tech Metals has admitted in U.S. District Court that it polluted the Columbia River near the Washington border in the past century. The statement uh, delivered on September 10th as part of a lawsuit brought against the company by the state and the Colville Confederated Tribes. The company argues it is not subject to U.S. law. The Spokesman Review reports that while the company is fighting the lawsuit, it has begun working with tribes and state regulators on how to best manage pollution from its smelter at Trail, British Columbia, about six miles north of the border. The Confederated Salish and uh, Kootenai Tribe plans to issue $10,000 checks to about 7,850 enrolled tribal members this week, distributing about half of the $150 million it received in a settlement over federal mismanagement of money and tribal trust lands. Tribal members will start receiving their checks uh, this Wednesday, and banks across the Flathead Indian Reservation and northwestern Montana reservations are preparing for the onslaught of transactions, according to the Missoula. The Tribal Council is still discussing what to do with the rest of the $150 million, care of the elderly, economic development, or language and cultural preservation are among the ideas under consideration. Some tribal members wanted all of the money distributed to individual tribal members. Two coalitions of uh, environmental groups filed notice on September 10th that they intend to sue the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service over the agency's decision to end federal protection for wolves in Wyoming. The groups oppose the state of Wyoming's classification of wolves as predators that can be shot on site in more than 80% of the state when federal protections end October 1st. Wyoming has also scheduled a regulated trophy wolf hunt in the remainder of the state, an area around the eastern and southern borders of Yellowstone National Park starting next month. The environmental groups emphasize that uh, Wyoming's current wolf management plan is similar to an earlier version that the federal agency repudiated after initially, accept, uh, excuse me, initially accepting it a few years ago. They claim the federal government is stopping wolf management for political reasons, not because the current plan is any better than the last one. Two wildlife biologists with the Confederated Colville Tribes have captured and collared a gray wolf on the North Central Washington Reservation. It's the third wolf to be live trapped there in the past three months, but the first to be captured by tribal officials themselves. Earlier this year, the tribe brought in a wolf trapping expert to, to teach its wildlife personnel how to successfully trap gray wolves, and then the team captured two wolves themselves. Two tribal wildlife biologists teamed up to trap and collar the latest wolf, a 104-pound female. They'll be monitoring the movements of all three wolves in the future. Colville Chairman John Serios said in a statement that the tribal efforts to develop a wolf management plan have been greatly enhanced by this latest success. The plan is expected to be, uh, excuse me, that plan, the wolf plan, is expected to be released later this year. A steel fragment from the destroyed World Trade Center in New York City is part of a new monument at the Crazy Horse Memorial in South Dakota dedicated to the victims of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Officials held a ceremony on September 11th on the 11th anniversary of the tax to dedicate the monument that also includes two stone pillars. 
Representatives of the New York Fire Department were invited to attend. The memorial also honors the efforts of emergency responders after the September 11, 2001 attacks on the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and United Airlines Flight 93. Sea Alaska Heritage Institute is looking for native art instructors. Institute officials say the teachers are needed to host a two-day workshops in southeast communities on a design element known as Formline. Officials say applicants should have advanced skills in Formline and teaching experience is preferred. Sea Alaska Heritage Institute is the nonprofit cultural and educational arm of the Juneau-based Sea Alaska Corporation, a regional native corporation. Citizens from throughout northern Wisconsin will be converging on Ojibwe Park west of Winter, Wisconsin on Saturday, September 22nd as part of the International Day of Peace movement promoted by the United Nations. Sponsored by several Democratic-affiliated associations, the International Day of Peace features elected state and tribal officials beginning at 10 a.m. with an opening by members of the Lakuteri Ojibwe tribe. Following throughout the day will be speakers, candidates, and representative of organizations working to get out the vote, educate people on issues of social, political, and economic justice. Several organizations in the region have committed to having information tables with literature on everything from sustainable farming and local job development to mining issues facing Wisconsin residents. The public event will run from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. with a community potluck feast at noon. And that's going to be another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you for joining with us by saying, Wah Wannan.